Good morning. Welcome back to Passion World Talk Radio Network. Educate, enlighten, entertain. On today's podcast, lest we forget, hyphen hysterical, we are talking about how money affects the federal elections here in the United States of America. Doubtless it affects other countries, but we're concentrating on the United States for this mini series. Last week, we spoke about the history of how it got started. Got started with rum punch, with rum punch, folks. However, today we're talking about how money affects elections. It was written back in 2018 when the original showdown was between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And it was written by Maggie Korth, K-O-E-R-T-H. And it is filed under 2018 election. The first thing that she writes, Maggie, is that she observes that Cindy Lauper said, a direct quote, money changes everything, unquote. And how right Miss Loper was, because everybody knows that money can buy you everything. No, we're not going to go into the philosophical or the psycho- psychological aspect that money can't buy you happiness, because that's not what this podcast is about. It's talking about money, lobbyists, influencers, powerful people who are controlling our elections today through the use of their capital, men like who are billionaires and don't feel anything is wrong by taking their money and putting it into election and literally buying their way into the office. Gone are the days when people are elected based on their experience, their expertise, their passion, their dedication, their belief in what they're doing is right. No, money talks, and it talks loud and clear in today's elections. The only type of people who can really run for office these days are wealthy people because only they have the capacity and the endless bank account to pay for what they need. When this article was written in 2018, they were looking at the U.S. House of Reps, and Maggie stated that that during the entire 2014 midterm cycle, that more money was raised by mid-August than any other time, and that the Senate candidates weren't far behind. They she states that ad volumes were up 86%. Now, ads on television are expensive. They always have been. And since you're paying by the second primarily, what you have to say has to stick, which means you use a lot of verbs, strong verbs to get your point across. But have you noticed in the elections, the ads that they create, they don't tell you what the candidate does. They do not tell you what the candidate believes in. They don't even tell you what the candidate may sacrifice to get across to his constituents and to have put into law what the citizens of this country require. No, they tear down the other guy. And they're hoping that by tearing down the other guy or gal, they'll make themselves look like they're the ones that should be put into office because the other ones are so awful. And then you go to the other side and their competition does the same thing. And it really turns me off, personal opinion. I don't know whether it turns you off. I haven't heard, but I sure would like to. So text me at 484-364-1032 if you're turned off by the ads that these candidates pour thousands of dollars into to capture attention and attract you to their way of thinking. Like I said, they buy the election, which used to be frowned upon in the United States, but apparently no longer. And as the article continues, Maggie says, all that money is going to buy somebody an election. 
Political scientists, though, do say that it's not a simple one-to-one -one because there's also fundraising and electoral success. But if they get rid of the electorate, it doesn't matter anymore, does it? It's a mute point by that time. Then they talk about dark money flowing into political coffers and action committees from undisclosed donors. And that's up 26%, and that was in 2018. Well, it's 2024 now, folks, and I'm pretty sure those numbers have gone up. How strong is the association between campaign spending and political success? Well, for House seats, for example, more than 90% of candidates who spend the most win. So what does that tell you? From 2000 through 2016, there was only one election cycle where that wasn't true. In 2010, 86% of the top spenders won, said Sheila Kramholz, executive director of the Center for Responsive Politics a nonpartisan research group that tracks campaign fundraising and spending. Gee, doesn't that make you feel a little bit better to know that? And it goes on to say that money is certainly strongly associated with political success. You think? I think where you have to change your thinking is that money causes winning, says Richard Lowell, professor of political science at Rutgers. I think it's more that winning attracts money. Well, I disagree. I think the more money you have, the more powerful you are. The more powerful you are, you can dictate what you want to what you don't want. Certainly, most of our presidents outside of Abraham Lincoln were quite wealthy when they sought the office of president of the United States. I think Lincoln was the first one who came below the Millionaires Club, and that was in the 1830s. So one has to wonder why, out of all of them, he's practically the only one who came in poor and not with a overseas European vacation, excuse me, not vacation, an overseas education to boister him, to be competitive with all the other big boys on the block. Certainly makes me wonder Adam Bonisha, a professor of political science at Stanford, who uh, manages the database on ideology, money, and politics and elections, says that's not to say money is irrelevant to winning. But decades of research suggests that money probably isn't the deciding factor. Well, yes and well, no. It just depends. But that was done in the 20th century. And we're now talking about the 21st century. Studies have shown that people who spend the most get the biggest effects. And they win. He said, these gains from spending likely translate to less of an advantage. However, voters are more partisan on and off. However, based on polls or knowledge of the district or just gut feeling, one candidate's more likely to win. And because of that, they give all this money to that person. Well, I think it's more than that. As subsequent trials have found, there's a lot of promises made by these candidates to their constituents as to what they receive for all the money they are given. It's called paybacks. And they put them in offices where they are not suited to take over because they neither have the experience nor the knowledge or the education to really carry it through. Or more importantly, they have their own agenda to follow. And they're put in there not only to follow the agenda that the wealthy man has promised to give them, but they follow their own agenda. So where does that leave the rest of the United States citizens? Something for everyone to think about. They have found that advertising, good, bad, or negative, works very well. And I think you will agree if you take a look at all the ads that are now on the television or streaming throughout the internet. 
they all have an influence in them on which they're trying to get your attention to vote for their candidate of their choice. We will stop here and continue next week on how money affects political spending. There are lots of things that are going on in the world now that will definitely influence this year's presidential elections. And I urge you all to take a good look around and to pin your ears open and listen to what's going on because the rhetoric is very interesting and you have to be careful and decide what is important and what is not. Thank you for listening this afternoon. You can hear this and see this all over again at youtube.com, PWR, Passionate World Talk Radio, and Passionate World Radio Network comes first, and then PWTR, Passionate World Talk Radio. You can also find it on facebook.com forward slash Passionate World Radio. Go over to our website, passionateworldtalkradio.com forward slash blog, where our blog is written on the program. She provides, our station manager, Jeannie White, provides the audio and also the video with a short synopsis of what the program is about. Thank you very much for listening today and stay tuned for next week when we will talk about money and politics. Have a great weekend.